I'd like to demonstrate a couple of tools and techniques in Adobe Illustrator involving generating pattern, repetition, and transformation. Particularly, I want to demonstrate the transform again command and how that together with the transform each command allows for some fairly powerful pattern design practice to emerge. I'm going to start very simply creating a square. Hold down the constraint button here. Actually, I'll go pretty basic here with a black square. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to introduce the use of symbols. Here's the symbols palette. Got a bunch of built-in symbols here. I want to take this shape here and turn it into a symbol. I mean, it's very simple. It's a square. It'd be really easy for me to replicate any time I wanted to. There are a few different reasons why you might want to have a symbol. For one thing, I'm going to be repeating this shape over and over and over again. If this was just a regular path, I would have many, many copies of this path. As a symbol, the symbol called square, I can have many, many copies of the symbol, but there will actually only be one square. It'll just show up a bunch of places. This will allow me to create a document that is much more concise, much smaller. One of the other reasons for using symbols is that you can edit them. So if I use this symbol thousands of times and then decide that I would really like the square to have rounded edges, I could just edit the symbol and that will change everywhere. So let's take a look at this in practice. First thing I want to do is select this. Okay, so I'm going to hold down the Alt key and start to drag this. I'm going to hold the Shift key down so it's constrained to go directly horizontally. I'm not too concerned with the space in between. If I was, I could um, use a grid or I could use other techniques for moving this a precise amount. So pattern and symmetry involves copying something and then transforming it. I've copied this and the transformation I've done is a move. Once, having, once I've done that, one of the features in Adobe Illustrator is to do the same thing again, transform again, or control, or command D. So with this selected, if I control D, I do the same copy and transformation. I select all of these, hold down the Alt key, move with the Shift key to constrain it, approximately the same distance. I can now Control D to get a bunch more. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole array. So that was done very easily. One copy, repeat, repeat, copy a row, repeat, repeat. Now I'd like to show the transform again command used a little bit differently. I'm going to select this group and I am going to apply a transformation to each one of these. I'm going to rotate them all 15 degrees. For this I'm going to use a different transformation. I could rotate, but that would rotate this whole block. In fact, let me just demonstrate. If I type in 15 degrees here, I've rotated this block of squares. Undo. What I want to do instead is rotate each one of these squares using the transform, transform each, or control, shift, alt, d, which I don't usually remember. 
Transform Image allows me to apply a scale, a move, and a rotate, together with possible reflections. I just want to do a 15 degree rotation to each of these. Now I'm going to select a different group, but do Control D to apply that same transformation, which was a rotation of each object. So Control D or Transform again doesn't have to be applied to the same object or group of objects. It's just whatever the last transformation was applied to whatever you currently have selected. So I'm going to use this to create some variation in my array. And it just so happens that 15 degrees, you do that across seven objects, you end up with a 90 degree rotation. I'm going to continue this pattern going down. Now if I was programming, I could just write a few, a couple of loops to do the same thing. But this is fairly easy to do manually. Now I have many permutations of the square with a square in each corner and a square rectilinear orientation of the square in the center and in the corners. Just to play with this a little bit more, I don't like the crowding of these. If we didn't have the transform each command, it'd be very hard to make each of these smaller. I'd have to select each one, scale it, or start all over again. But with the transform each command, I can go in here and take out the rotation but just specify that I want to do a little bit of a scaling, perhaps 90% horizontally and vertically. I don't know why they don't have a constrain button for these. I could preview this, see if that's enough space, and I kind of like that. So I click OK. I could do an iterative sort of thing where I Control D, where I scale those down more, and then scale these down more, and then just the one in the center. So transform each, transform again. Different design patterns, uh, different variations you can create within what otherwise would just be a static array of boxes. I also wanted to motivate this idea of using symbols. I created this using one symbol and I spent some time creating a design pattern based on that. But now what if I think that, oh that's the pattern I want, but I want to replace the symbol with something else. I'm going to double click on one of these squares. It says I'm going to edit the symbol definition. This opens up this one copy of the symbol in isolation mode. And here you see symbol edit. I just have my square here. There's only one path in this. And I think I'll use my convert anchor point tool here. Just go in, make this slightly eccentric. So a simple edit. Now to get out of this mode, I could just go up here and click out of it. And here you see all of the symbols are now showing the new definition. So obviously this could be extended uh, in many ways. The symbol could be anything.